Henry's Hand, written and illustrated by Ross McDonald. Some of us start out whole and stay that way. Some need a spare part or two. Henry, he was a bits and pieces kinds of guy. Every once in a while, one of his bits would go astray. One morning, he left one of his pieces in the bed, which made for a very awkward day. And once, one of his eyes rolled under the couch and wouldn't come out until bedtime. Come on, cut it out. This isn't funny anymore, said Henry. Tee hee. So Henry made up a little rhyme to help him take inventory every morning. One eye and another, one ear and his brother, one mouth, one big nose, two feet with ten toes, two elbows, two knees, skin smooth as cream cheese, a head with a hair, and a brain in there, some organs and glands, Two very nice hands. Of all his parts, Henry's right hand was his favorite. Henry and Hand did everything together, like play marbles, and went everywhere together in their nice red car. They especially loved the springtime. When it started to warm up, leaves began to bloom and the birds got busy. But sometimes, when Henry was feeling lazy, he would get Hand to do things he really should have been doing himself. It's not that easy for a little Hand to scrabble all the way down the driveway to fetch the newspaper every morning or start the car when it's cold outside. Meanwhile, Henry is inside drinking a hot cocoa, not helping his friend. Henry was doing less and less and hand more and more. And before long, Hand started to get more and more annoyed. Hey, Hand, change the channel. Yes, your majesty. So one night at bedtime, when Henry sent Hand to fetch his toothbrush, Hand just took off. Henry didn't notice until early the next morning. One very nice, hey! When Hand didn't come back with the newspaper, Henry knew right away that something was up. Henry looked everywhere for Hand. At first, he needed him. Then he started to miss his friend. Perhaps he was lost, Henry wondered. Or maybe even hurt. Oh dear, Henry is starting to worry for his friend. After a while, Henry realized that Hand wasn't coming back and it was all his fault. Henry realized that how he treated Hand wasn't very nice. Meanwhile, Hand headed off for the city, leaving Henry to take care of himself. Hand hitched a ride on the back of a turnip truck. And by noon, he was right in the heart of downtown. The lights, the noise, the bustle and hubbub, it was all so new and exciting to Hand. 
He'd never felt more alive. But by dinner time, he was cold, tired, hungry, lonely, dirty, scared, and ready to go home. And that's when it happened. Scree! Extra, extra, read all about it. Hero, homeless hand saves wealthy social light. Hand later said it was one of those right place, right time kind of things. Anyone would have done what he did, but the papers didn't see it that way. Everyone was writing and reading about Hand, even Henry. It didn't take long before Hand landed in the lap of luxury. No more dirty country shack. Hand now lived in a big house in the best part of town. He no longer had a weight on Henry, hand and foot. In fact, the house was chock a block with butlers and cooks and maids who all waited on him. He even had a room full of assistants to answer all the fan mail he had started getting. Han didn't have to lift a finger. But Han soon found himself with nothing to do. Every last thing was already being done by someone else. Oh, sure, they'd give him little chores to help, but he could tell that they didn't really need a hand with anything. Like the chef, he has his arms crossed. I don't think he's very pleased with hand. So, in a busy house filled with busy people in the middle of a busy city, Hand felt all alone. One day, Hand spotted a bedraggled little tree on the corner with new buds turning green on the ends of its branches. It must be spring, he realized, his favorite season. A small blue bird was trying to build a nest. But every time a big truck drove by, the wind would blow the nest apart. The poor bird kept trying over and over, but she was getting nowhere. Hand wanted to help but he just didn't feel like himself somehow. His secretary was talking to him, but he hardly heard her. Sir, we finished answering all of your fan mail, except for this one. There's no return address. Meanwhile, Henry had his good days and his bad days and he did his best to keep himself busy. It wasn't easy. Spring was coming, and there was a lot of work to do. He had to tend his garden. The roof needed patching. It was time to shake out the rugs and clean the house. And there was always so much paperwork to do. If you look closely, you can see that Henry was cutting and pasting all of the newspaper articles about his right hand. One day, Henry was making breakfast when he heard a knock at the door. At first, he didn't know what that noise was, since he never got any visitors. Do you know what that symbol is above Henry's head? If you said question mark, 
You are correct. But he soon figured it out. I got your letter, said Hand. Oh, said Henry. I came as soon as I could. Okay. Is that breakfast I smell? <gasps> oh no! Could you use a hand? I sure could! And that was that. That's just how it is with old friends. You pick up where you left off and don't need to say much. A word here and there speaks volumes. More lemonade hand? You bet! Best I've had in a long time. That time apart from one another gave them time to miss each other and really appreciate their friendship more than they ever did before. Spring arrived. It started to warm up, leaves began to bloom, and the birds got busy. So Henry and Hand took a walk to their favorite tree. Oh, I almost forgot. I invited someone to come and stay. Hmm, who could that be? I gave your letter to her for the nest. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Hey, it's the little bluebird from the city. Using Henry's letter that says, I'm sorry, little bluebird is finally able to make her nest. And look. She has three little blue eggs. How sweet. The end. I hope, little reader, you enjoy the story. And if you want to hear your favorite book, just leave a comment down below. And remember, always be kind to your friends and say sorry to make it right again. Till next time, good night.